Hey guys, and welcome to the Get Life Podcast. Today I am joined with Kevin. Hey, what's up, guys? And my boy Joe. I am sick. <laughs> I was cleaning my room just like like yesterday morning, and like haven't have a dust allergy. So when I like I was exposed to so much dust, and now I'm just. Like so, so cleaning, you're allergic to cleanliness. Is that what you're saying? I think that's a bullshit excuse, no, Joe. You're saying, "Oh, I don't want to clean my room, so I'm allergic." No, to no, it. I no, I have a dust allergy. Oh, okay, okay, that makes sense. I'll allow it. Like, I, I was the opposite. <laughs> I thought before the recording, I didn't mean notice that much, but like, damn, your voice sounds like shit now. No, 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 no offense, but like, <laughs> you know, it does. It doesn't sound like shit, Joe. It sounds sexy. All right. Like a lot of people, you know, stay that, sexy. Uh, what, you got, oh, like, uh, the amount of people, fish? the amount, look, look, guys, the amount of panties that has just dropped now because Joe's stay sexy at the beginning. We don't even need to do the episode anymore. I just tell Welcome you. Welcome to Get a Life Podcast. Okay. okay. The subject. <laughs> speaking, speaking of subjects today, we're going for a more um, casual episode. Uh, going back to the old days. Traditional. Yeah. Well, not traditional, really. It's more just like how it used to be back in the day. Um, Except three with, times the fun, because you know it's not just bish anymore. It's just three times the fun. Oh my god, Kevin! It sounds like a really bad porno at this point. Like the, I don't. Oh, well, I don't mean. I didn't three, think of that. Three times the fun with Kevin, Joe, and Bish. Like, but no, seriously. Hashtag gelp after dark. That's it. Hashtag gelp after dark. But today we're going to be discussing a bunch of different topics. Um, but I think we're going to be starting off with what we've been playing and what we're hyped for. And then we'll see how it goes. And that's just it. So, Kevin? Yeah, so, for you new folks, Get Alive Podcast is a monthly gaming discussion podcast under the Get Alive group. And we talk about all sorts of games, from big AAA titles all the way down to awesome indie games. But our forte is mainly Japanese games, so expect a lot of that. It can be found on iTunes and Stitcher and Google Play Music. And remember, if you want to join in the fun, then follow us on Twitter at Get Alive Podcast. And if you like what we do here on the podcast, spread the word. We'd really appreciate it. Yeah, so I just want to get into it and ask you guys what were the games that you guys have been playing, what kind of consoles that you guys have been playing mostly, and I just want to know your opinions. And I think we should start with Joe. All right, well, uh, well, let's keep so- this under two hours, Joe. All right. We know you've been playing Final <laughs> Fantasy XIV. Let's not turn this into a Final Fantasy XIV I mean, I'm episode. not turning... <laughs> I, I don't know how I'm going to drag out fourteen for, like, two hours. I've just been playing a couple different things. I haven't been playing much recently. Well, I mean, of course I've been playing fourteen. Uh, though mainly I've just been going on go, going off for of Raid. Uh, I re- recently replayed Majora's Mask 3D because I was watching uh, I was watching a Let's Player, like, play through Zelda, like, Zelda uh, Ocarina of Time. And I just, I was like, you know, I really loved, like, Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask, so, like, you know what, I'll go back and replay one of them. But I think the biggest thing I've been playing recently has been uh, Monster Hunter World. I picked I picked up the PC release. Like, how, how well optimized is it? Because, I mean, I've been thinking of it too, but, like, my PC, like, barely meets min specs. So I'm kind of scared, you I know? mean, uh, so, let me just put this put this into perspective so i use a uh i use an i7 quad core processor look at mr moneybags over here <laughs> we're here using intel pentiums <laughs> i'm intel pen no I'm, I'm i you would find me dead before finding me using pentium and then i also have a gtx 960m which i think i've heard is as strong as like a 670 i also have i think like eight gigabytes of ram oh, okay so that's that's pretty standard yeah, like, it, it, it's honestly, okay, so, honestly, it doesn't use a lot, if I remember correctly, it doesn't use a lot of the uh, GPU when you're playing the game, it, it mostly uses the CPU, so, so ba- in other words, like, something like AMD would work a lot better for the PC release, because, like, it it has more cores, which allow for more, uh, like, it they aren't as strong as Intel cores, but... It's it's more it's basically quantity versus quality, you know what I mean? So an AMD would work perfectly for this game because you have more cores to work with and a lot more to process. Well, I'll be honest with you. I think the reason mainly that they're going for CPU as opposed to like mainly focusing on on the GPU is because 
you have a bunch of different GPUs and it's just a lot more difficult to optimize a game for all these different graphics cards. You know what I mean? Because there's like 10 yeah. different variants of the GTX 1080. You, you know what I mean? Like there's... Well, because it's a 960M because I'm, I'm using this on a laptop. Like yeah. normally the M series is save for i think like laptops like like computers that you can just take out but yeah but just to go back to your question kevin like it it runs surprisingly well it doesn't t it doesn't require as much as you think like i was afraid it wasn't gonna run at all on my computer but i've i've been able to reach like 60 frames oh, okay i mean if, if you can run it on a not what 960 i'm i can i'm pretty sure i can run it on a 660 ti yeah i mean like, granted it, i had to put a lot of my settings on low However, like I, regardless, it's a it's a beautiful game though. Right? Yeah, it's Visual. it's still very be it's still a beautiful game despite the uh, the downgrades I had to go for. But that said, it was my first Monster Hunter game, so I didn't really know what to expect. Are like you just I going, tried like, to do it solo, or like do you have a, a squad with you? Or oh, well, I, I've been playing with some friends. Uh, so uh, funny thing, the reason I got into Monster Hunter World is because of a crossover in fourteen, where they uh, brought one of the like flagship heroes. Oh, not flash heroes, flagship monsters. Uh, who goes by the name Rathlos into into the game as a trial, and I and then after playing through, I'm like, you know, I really want to play Monster Hunter because I, I hear like World is really fun, and then the PC release is coming soon, and then like after some like divisiveness, I I bit the bullet and decided to buy it. So one thing I want to know is why did you go specifically for the PC port? as opposed to the PS4 port, which would have cost you less money, and there's a bunch, I don't want to say there's a bunch more players, but I, I would say the player base on the PS4 is a lot larger than the player base on the PC currently. Well, yeah. it's a number of reasons. One, I uh, I didn't want to pay for PlayStation Plus. Oh, like, I thought you I, had it. Okay, never mind. Oh, right. no, I, I, I haven't enough. used PlayStation Plus in a while, because I, I like playing PS4 games, like I love my PS4, but honestly, I don't want to Single pay... Stuff? Uh, yeah, I don't. Mm -hmm. I, well, I mean, I want to play multiplayer, but I don't want to pay money for it. You know what I mean? So, what are you gonna uh, do when the Switch uh, multiplayer system thing comes out? I mean, it's only like forty dollars, right? I mean, you're not losing. It's that like much. I think it was like twenty dollars a year, if I remember correctly. So it honestly, it's it's that averages out to like less than uh, how how would I do the math for this? I mean, it's it's pretty damn affordable, right? Compared yeah, it's pretty to, affordable. Like it, uh, it's, Xbox it's, Live and PS Plus, right? And you right, do get so games, I mean, but I, I guess the only downside to that is it's on the Switch, right? The Switch is honestly pretty shitty <laughs> online infrastructure so far, right? With a, you know, microphone setups and shit. Um, it's it's weird. I, I just use Discord anyway, so like in the end, it doesn't really affect me. I it's guess, just... I guess, but I mean, like at the same time, it's kind of disappointing in some aspects. Well, yeah. I mean, I just don't want to. Like, I don't like the idea of paying for it. Like, I'll put that out right now. I'm still not behind the idea of having to pay to play, like, Nintendo games online because, like, I've never had to. This is kind of, like, something that's new to me. I don't know. There, there's something a, that's... There's a, a for and against for it. Like, there's a lot of people that will say, well, how do you expect them to pay upkeep for their I mean, that I understand that, too, which is like why that, I haven't, right? like... I mean, I'm not saying, like, you know what, they should... I'm not saying, like, you know what, like, I'm not going to pay for the service because I have to pay for it. Like I'm, I'm still gonna use it. Yeah. It's just kind of like I prefer like. Yeah, I mean, we're like you'd Nintendo is not pay anything offered, at all, right? Yeah, they off. Yeah, they offer. Then I mean, to pay for the exact same service. You know? Yeah, you always want something free over something that costs money. Like yeah. it, it's kind of what it comes down to. But uh, yeah. just back to the topic at hand, like uh, another reason I decided to play the PC version of Monster Hunter World is because I know a lot of people who were going to buy it. And the game doesn't have crossplay between PC and PS4. You know, this is what this is another. I, I just want to interject. This is this is something that really pisses me off about crossplay. Like, how come there's a there's a lot of games like uh, you got Rocket League, you got like Fortnite and all that, and they and they offer crossplay between you know PC and Switch and whatever. And, and then Sony just have to be dicks and say, you know what, no crossplay. Why? What was what? Because they're like the top dog right now, right? Well, I think it's it a different issue entirely. I think it's like, I think this is just a simple matter of them not being able to implement it well because, like, crossplay is a lot harder to implement into a bullshit. game than a lot Sorry, of people though. think. I, think it it is. I, I agree with Kevin. And I mean, I was studying this in class. Like, I was studying this in my game, game marketing design class. Like, he was, he was going through. I mean, uh, initially, I thought the same thing, but then. No, but like, why, why would your arguments not apply to you know, like Microsoft? And, like, you know, the, the well, no, 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 I'm not shit, talking. No, right? I, that's not what I'm talking. About. No, I'm talking about just programming it. I'm, I'm, no, I'm, I'm saying like this is just. A, I'm saying the issue of some companies like not deciding to use crossplay for sake of business 
and some companies not using crossplay for the sake of just not being able to program it, or like, there's two different scenarios. I feel like it's this scenario is the latter. I guess, yeah. I mean, after all, Sony is a pretty small indie company, right? We can't expect them to have the same, you know, level of cash as say Microsoft or Nintendo, right? It is unreasonable to expect that, I guess, in retrospect. <laughs> I mean, it's a matter of them not wanting to rather than not being able to, honestly. They have the Well, resources. because they have the cross-play between uh, PC and PS4 players or Street Fighter V, if I remember correctly. Exactly, yeah. And yeah, so like the game's thriving because of that, right? What do you say? I don't think it's the it's Sony or Microsoft. Yeah, I don't think it's that. I think... Yeah, it, it's, it's just as simple as like being able to like implement it and make it work. But Monster Hunter, Monster Hunter is a Capcom game, right? Yes. Okay, that, that says a lot. Guys... Capcom, Street Fighter also got the, the thing, so it's like, but you know, I well, think it, it, is. I think I it's know, it didn't make sense to me either, but like, they must have the reasons for it. I, I think it's a Sony problem though, because yeah, as we said, it's, you know, SF5 is thriving on, on PC because you're able to connect with PS4 players, right? And so Capcom has been willing to do that in the past, right? And I think that uh, there is news of, what is it, uh, Bethesda, right, giving Sony shit for their crossplay, they're get, they're putting pressure on Sony to implement crossplay for their future games, because right? they want that. They recognize that you know there's value in that. You want to have a bigger player base, right? It's it's kind of like a win-win scenario. You get a bigger player base, right? You get to play with friends on different platforms. Everyone's happy, right? Uh, it's good for lo the longevity of games. But it's right? not good. For, it's not good for Sony's pockets, right? Like that, you're not lining it with cash. Like, sometimes, like, the reason Crossway is implemented is also because of, like, because of, like, business decisions. Like, it might not be ethical, per se, but it's still something they do in order to gain, Absolutely. Like, yeah, but, I mean, I, as consumers, right, you just kind of call them out on their bullshit. Especially when Microsoft and Nintendo have wholeheartedly embraced it, right? And, fuck, it's not even a... Sony themselves have shown that, you know, hey, they can make it work in the past, right? It's just... To suddenly do an about face on it now is kind of weird, in my opinion. Right? I mean, you, you've shown that it works for other games, right? For uh, guess a five, right? Rocket League it's has shown that for other platforms. Be able that to really answer. Well. But either I, I think we're getting a tad bit ranty. We're getting a bit off track, but but yeah, I, I know. I mean, it's still good conversation. Like I feel like like because the, and the idea of cross like cross play and just playing with other people is like one hundred percent relevant. Yeah, I mean, everyone wants it, right? I remember, like, like years ago, right? At some point or another, I think everyone's always wanted to play games with their friends on other consoles, right? Like, I remember, like, with MW2 specifically, I was on Xbox, my friend was on PS3, and I was like, yo, I'd kick your ass, right? If we, you know, 1v1 me on Rust, bro. But we could never do that unless we came to each other's houses because different consoles, right? And we were like, damn, yeah. you know, maybe one day we'll be able to have crossplay or something. And now it's a thing, right? And it's just a... People are understandably frustrated when you just kind of get like cock blocked by big companies just because they want a little bit of extra cash, right? Yeah, well, I mean, it's multiple reasons, like the the extra cash, but like again, as I said before, it's also like crossplay is just very difficult to implement for a number of reasons, for a number of like programming related reasons. That said, uh, what was I talking about? So yeah, Monster like those are, yeah, those are the reasons I really I mainly bought the PC version. I was uh. Like, I was going to play the PS4 version, but, like, I did, again, I didn't want to pay for the PlayStation Plus. I didn't want to... I, like, I wanted to play with other people. I didn't want to just play by myself. The game can be soloed, like, 100%, but it's just a lot better with friends. It's like Borderlands. You can totally do that solo, but you're missing out on part of the experience. Definitely. Yeah, but uh, it was my first Monster Hunter game, so I, I wanted to... Like, I wanted to get into the series and try, like, see what everyone loved about it. It, it's it's a very like it's a very enjoyable series well I mean, enjoyable enjoyable game rather because I it, it only looks World. like it i mean the combat looks amazing and i want to get into the series because i've also never played and entering the series before i'd say this is a good very good starting point for you it does look like it uh but honestly what caught my attention more so than world was honestly okay and this you know might sound kind of stupid but it was um i think it was ultimate or something or no generations or whatever the one for the switch the one that was on 3ds yes, that generations the double cross yeah that one right so they're porting that to the switch and i know that it's you know being originally on the 3ds obviously it's graphically limited 
right? But at the end of the day, I don't really care about that, right? Because my PC is a fucking toaster at this point anyways. But, you know, there are less features and all that, but there's a lot of DLC for it, right? It's packed with content, and more importantly, it's on the Switch, right? I can take that shit on the go, on, or, you know, I can play it at home as well. We just It's so flexible, right? And just the prospect of having it, you know, with me all the time is really appealing. Whereas, you know, yes, I can definitely get World on my PC, but at the same time, I'd only be able to play it while I'm at home, right? In between like study sessions and shit. So it's kind of limiting, right? Honestly. I mean, it makes sense, but like that said, I, I feel like that shouldn't like persuade you to skip Monster Hunter World. I feel like there's just so much to offer and a lot of quality of life changes it makes. Well, I mean, from what I've heard, at least, because I heard that Monster, what, Monster Hunter World introduces a lot that wasn't apparent in, like, the previous games, and makes the game feel a lot smoother and a lot better. Honestly, like, the story isn't really anything, like, worth talking about, but, yeah, I like, I recently got... I think many I people recently play the series for the story. It's mainly the... Yeah, it's mainly the, the combat, the, and the combat, and the, the combat delivers. Right? It, it's very engaging, it's addicting. It's good to hear. It's good I to absolutely hear. love it, and then, like it gets even better once you reach high rank because like the main like the beginning you're going through like low ranks, but like once you get to like six star hunts and higher, then that's when you start going into like the real meat of the game, and it, it becomes a lot more engaging, a lot more addicting, and like I recommend it to anybody really. But uh, but yeah, like otherwise I haven't really been playing much. Like, so I, ma mainly World and uh, fourteen is that right? Yeah, maybe a little okay. Overwatch too, but like I've re I've just kind of went back and played a, play a couple games that I used to play. Um, I'm I'm thinking about going back to Persona Q because I still have to get through that nice. to prepare for Q2. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, speaking of um, generations and shit, eh, um, another game that I want to try out simply because it's on Switch now is, I mean, it's not out yet, but I'm looking forward to it, and that would be Diablo Three. The Eternal Collection, which is coming out in October, man. Like, I'm, I wouldn't consider myself, you know, huge into, you know, isometric RPGs and shit, like Diablo or, you know, just that general gameplay style, like with uh, MMOs. But recently, um, it, it's piqued my interest because my friend, who is a huge, or my flatmate and friend, uh, he has this huge obsession with MMOs, right? He's an MMO player through and through. And we just said, you know what? Um, why not just fucking try to start uh, a playthrough together? And we, we got on Guild Wars 2, right? So, pretty good shit so far. I, I'm i I'm pretty surprised by how much I'm enjoying it, because I'm not, uh, honestly, an MMO guy, or even, you know, uh, a MOBA guy. Yeah, right? like, Guild that Wars 2, I've heard, is a very good, like, introductory game, because, like, it, it, it's very uh, uh, free-to-play friendly. Exactly. That that was honestly the main thing that pulled me in. I was considering like Final Fantasy XIV and also uh, ESO, but I mean the thing is with ESO at least, right? You you pay the base price. It's buy to play. You pay the base price, and then you know you're good to go. The subscription's optional. But with Final Fantasy um, XIV, right? It looks amazing, right? In terms of gameplay, in terms of graphics, in terms of the raids and shit. But it's like. Again, I feel that honestly, the monthly subscription for MMOs is kind of, yeah, I say outdated. Yeah, it's kind of redundant in 2018, right? I know that WoW still does it, but then again, like, WoW is a fucking huge monster of a game, right? It's, well, it's a I phenomenon. feel like 14s recently, like, began to rival WoW. Yeah, definitely, but like. It's like, it's, it's kind of like, I mean, I understand the. I, I, I agree in that, like, prices can be absurd. Like, maybe for MMO players, it doesn't, you know, they're, you guys are used to it, right? Because it's always been the business model. But for, like, to get new players, right? Yeah, like, they aren't just, like, they have to maintain the server somehow, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, I'm the, you can ar you can argue about the price because, honestly, like, 15 a month can be, like, a little pricey, depending yeah. on how you look at it. But, like, I feel like the, a that's price like is still three game, kinda... That's, like, three AAA games I can buy a year there for... The yeah, but I, I feel like the price is still kind of necessary because it, it helps like keep the game alive because if they suddenly went free to play then like how would they be able to fund the servers how would they be able to push out the content? i mean not even free to play just like buy to play you know like just like a one if they, if they released yeah. you know buy well, to i mean play yeah, for, like... buying a game is a given like no like it's, it's final fantasy you're gonna buy a game regardless <laughs> I, I guess i'll check out uh 14 depending on how much i like guild wars 2 right combat's pretty you know standard so far it's nice it's nice yeah, i I'm... heard the pvp is very fun 
Oh yeah, World vs. World apparently is something that fucking draws a lot of people in, so I'm looking forward to that. W one thing I wanted to mention about Final Fantasy XIV is that, and, and in MMOs in general, right, a lot of people just stick to one MMO and they just play one game. Like, like solidly just play one game for like a year, two years. You Because you mentioned... Um, you mentioned World of Warcraft. There are people that, have, you know, would, are just addicted to World of Warcraft. So I think, Kevin, if you're spending $15 a month on a game that you're just spending so many hours in, the value, I think, it's up there. Do you see what I mean? Like, speak personally as, like, somebody who's played 14 for the past, uh, like, what? It, I would say, like, three years now. Like, I've been playing it for quite a while. Uh, like, I've only really gone on to raid recently because I've done a lot in the game. Uh, it honestly comes down to personal preference and what you're looking for in an MMO. Um, of course, the time sink is there, like, that's a given. Like, what you want to do with that amount of time is really up to you. And in the end, the, like, the worth of your $15 is objective. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess come down, it's a it's a case-by-case -case basis, but it's just like, you know, as I said before, like, veterans of that genre don't mind paying it but that's not the problem right because those veterans aren't going anywhere the problem is how do you attract new blood to you know well i mean new well i mean the veterans also started out as new blood you need to understand well, that you can do what wow did wow i think it's free until level 20 or something do you know that's what, I mean? what final fantasy has right now oh, but yeah? it's just well i mean kevin you have to think about it like this it's like veterans also started out as those new people yeah, but that was, they started out in a different time though. Now, when you have competition from like Terra and shit, right? So many, so many buy to play MMOs, right? Um, you have to compete with that, right? You have to change, you know? And obviously 14 and, and WoW can com keep their subscription models because their player bases are huge, right? Uh, but it's just, for me, you know, as, as a newbie to the genre, I'm just looking at uh, all these competitors, right? I'm like, okay, I don't know whether I'll enjoy the genre. I don't know if I'll stick with it, right? So why, how can I justify spending like $15 a month to play it? Especially, you know, when, when you're like studying and shit, right? As a student, you know, you got exams and shit. If you don't, you, you might not necessarily have the time. I mean, it's also a matter of starting it, you know? at the right time as well. Like you don't have to start within like, while, while you're like buried in work. That's the exact thing. If I wanted to play like, you know, like Siege, right? If I wanted somebody, somebody to get into Rainbow Six Siege with me, that wouldn't even be an issue because it's just like, you know, buy it and then play, or, play it whenever you want to play it. Play it ha as often as you want to, right? O on your own time, right? You don't feel pressured to play it because you're paying a monthly subscription. That's just, it, there's so many limitations that come into play, you know, because of that model. We have to consider they also offer a lot of ways to kind of try it out before having to like put any like invest any sort of like actual money to it. Like they give you the trial version and then they also when you buy 14 they give you one month free. And so it gives you the opportunity to like try it out and if you like it enough then you know what you can put down the subscription. Because you, a month is a lot of time like even yeah, with definitely. like work and stuff like if, if you're able to find a time it's a lot of free time. One thing that I want to mention is that you pay for the base game, right? Before you're paying for subscriptions. Am I correct in saying that, Joe? Yeah, so it's it's a bit different, I think, from, from the way I see it. It's because, you know, if you don't like a game, you can always resell the game, right? Can you? I don't think you can resell 14. You can't really resell 14 because what you're doing is, like, you're not technically buying the game. You're buying the license to play the game. As is the case with so many games now. Let's say if you didn't like the game. You're stuck with this purchase that you've already made, so I think yeah, you can't you can't resell it. Just th there's so many limitations, right? Yeah, that's, that's the way I'm seeing. It. I think MMOs need to be more, as Kevin said, more open to new players in that sense. Maybe they could have done it as a demo, where you get one month free, and then if you like it, you can actually buy the license to play the game. Well, I mean that's what they have. That's what the trial is. Like the trial is you play up to. I think you get the full game. You play up to level. Uh, I can't remember. I think it was like 35. I need to remember, like, level yeah. 30. I need to look at it again, but, uh... What I have to say, get... though, is that, I mean, as a new player, right, I, I love to know that, but the thing is, my impression is that for MMOs, correct me if I'm wrong, but, you know, the, the, the heart of the game is the end game, right? When you reach max level and shit, when you start doing raids with your group and all that, right? So, I don't know, am I getting the full experience at level 35, or am I just getting, you know, the tip of the iceberg? Is it, will I have enough of a taste of the experience to make, make that choice? 
Well, something that differentiates Final Fantasy XIV from other MMOs is just how, like, uh, it, it's how story-oriented it is. Because at its heart, it's still, like, a, a mainline Final Fantasy game. And it has, like, a story that focuses on you as, like, an adventurer who who grows into what the entire realm learns, like, knows as the Warrior of Light. And you're always fighting, like, as you progress, you're, like, you go from, like, fighting these, like, little, like, monsters that, that are, like, inside dungeons to the, like, the primals to, like, these giant, like, to these gods that, to, that are just very strong and are, like, keen on destroying, like, they're causing havoc around them. Hmm. I mean, that's one of the things that I hear a lot about 14 is that uh, it's, it's very story driven, right? And a lot of people like that. Conversely, on the flip side, I hear that one criticism of 14 is that it is, uh, the beginning is quite long. It feels like a, like a drag getting through the beginning and the combat is slower compared to other MMOs. If not yeah, a lot of critique comes from the story just like it, it, it has a lot of interesting stuff when like be prior to reaching level 50 but then like the post 50 content gets like can get very stale like a lot of people dislike it for that reason and but then once you get once you get the heavens word however then the story like goes in a direction that you don't really expect and it feels a lot better as a result and another thing about 14 is that it, it appeals a lot more to like casual players than like other MMOs you'll see like you'll have like there's a lot of content for people who just want to play casually they don't like aren't like into like extreme rating or like trying like like savage rating or like ultimate rating like stuff like that uh they have uh like story versions of the raids they have like dungeons that can be done by anybody like try like normal mode trials like there's a lot of options for casual players you also have the crafting system like like these little like side games you can play it, it, there's something for everyone really i don't know why mmos can't be like runescape again do you know what i mean like I mean, i've never played runescape Runes so i need a little bit of context runescape Kevin, you know RuneScape, right? I, I know RuneScape. I've never played it, though. Wait, you guys have never played RuneScape? Okay, okay. RuneScape I've, not, was I've never been an MMO guy. Dude, man. So RuneScape honest, was this MMO that we would play in middle school. Yeah, of course. I mean, everyone knows about it's it. It's free to play, like, and it was just like, you can choose to be a member, but or you can just be like casual player playing for free in browser, right? It, it was it was pretty janky, but I mean, it was pretty cool at the same time. So I was, I was wondering how come we don't see more i don't want to say runescape as a casual mmo but i mean there was a lot less investment in terms of money compared to other ones like wow and you know i mean well because a problem you come up come to is that you'll put so much emphasis on the member version that the like free version will end up feeling stale well no runescape like, free was was all right as well i'm not gonna lie it was it was really enjoyable i i think though bish you, you mentioned that it was a it's a browser game. Is it was, that it? It's a browser game. Yeah, it, ru it runs. You in have to Java. consider that you know you you get what you pay for, right? Because it's a browser game. You know, obviously, I remember seeing gameplay of it. It's not as graphically intensive, which is good for accessibility. But then again, you know, it's not as immersive as say, fourteen, right? Which has beautiful visuals, right? which which is known for that. Um, and also with browser, you know, this, the the tools you have available are so much more limited. Right, it's not quite in the same league as you know your AAA MMO. I heard now that they're trying to make a mobile version, so it will be interesting to see what a mobile version of what of RuneScape. It'll be, I think, it, RuneScape? yeah, yeah. Oh. Apparently, it's coming out in 2018, so I don't know how it's going to be or anything like that. There's not much said on it, but it raises a good point. Are we going to see like MMOs venturing into that space? Like, well, I mean, Final Fantasy XI is already making that step. Like, Final Fantasy XI is also an MMO, and they're making a like a, a mobile version is being made by Nexon. Ah, Nexon, and, of course. <laughs> yeah, I mean it, that kind of speaks for itself. But <laughs> they're trying to make it. I think they're making it a lot more single player based. I think I think it's gonna have a single player emphasis compared to the original. And like, I wonder like if like other MMOs will kind of follow suit. Like like. What Bish said with RuneScape. I, I really want to get into what Kevin was playing uh, recently. So I want to know, Kevin, what, what games are you playing at the moment? What's catching your other, eye? Other than 
catching my eye. Other than Guild Wars 2, as I said previously, uh, mainly I'm, I'm still working on Breath of the Wild. I got it back in May is, you know, I got my Switch and Breath of the Wild as a combo kind of to celebrate the end of exams and the end of my first year of uni. Uh, I'm st still not done. 55 hours in it. Uh, I've only gone to the Divine Beast, right? It's just such a huge game, right? Yeah, it's basically um, Skyrim. <laughs> it's basically Skyrim. That's exactly it. Um, and I don't know. I've just been kind of, I wouldn't say losing interest. It's been kind of a drag though, because I'm trying to get like all the i'm trying to 100 percent the game right so i'm going for like all the shrines and side quests trying to go for shit. all the koroks too yeah you know there are like 900 koroks in yeah that game, I, right? I know <laughs> but i mean my main focus you right know now the, is the shrines, you know right? the reward so, like, you get at the end of it too it's literally just a golden pile of shit what the fuck well i didn't hear about that wait 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 you're, you're telling me it's a golden turd Yes, that's that's the, the reward. It, it's it's just golden poop. It's supposed to be an inside joke to. Uh, it's supposed to be a reference to like some another thing in the Zelda series, I believe, or something that uh, Anima mentioned. But I I I need to remember. Like I I I, I forget. But yeah, that's the reward for getting 900 Koroks. <laughs> it's more of like a completion thing. Like it's just the satisfaction of being able to get all the Koroks is really what it is in the end. The thing is, when you try to like 100% a game, right? Uh, I don't want to like, and I fucking bought. The season pass as well before completing the game right because i was like you know what i'm loving this so much i want to buy the season pass but then <laughs> the thing is the season pass gives you like 10 billion quests at the same time right because it's it's not uh most of the the missions that you get as part of the season pass um they give you like special unlocked. costumes it's yeah it's not unlocked at a specific moment in the story because you do it whenever right like 90 percent of the missions in uh in breath of the wild you can do it in whatever order you want problem with that is i'm just feeling overwhelmed right now and i don't want to do the main story because i don't want to like rush through the main story before getting all the dlc missions done because what there, divine beasts are... have you done so far uh ruda and naboris Oh, good. You, you you're following the same route I did. Like I yeah. I was I, I, I think started next, with those two I'll as probably well. do Mount Doom, whichever that that one is. Oh, the the Goron yeah, uh, Death but Mountain. I, but I might do Ravali's Divine Beast just because his ability is nice. It, it's nice. To ex it's used to explore the world, right? And I think it'd be kind of fucking useless if you get that last, right? So I, I'm kind of torn, but. Right now, I'm just trying to get through the... I'm stuck on this one shrine quest, right? Where it's just this fucking maze in the middle of the Drudo Desert. And... You know there's a I, way to cheese it, right? How? Just climb on top of the maze. <laughs> I did. And I, I'm over the objective marker, but like... Oh, I mean, exit, there, I mean that's not enough, though. There also, there's also, like... there They kind of like, have, like, an anti-cheese system to it, too. You also have to explore the areas and find, like, an entrance that's, like, hidden within, like, the hallways. So, I mean, the puzzles are very nice. Some of them are, yeah, I mean, I guess it they're not bad, but I gotta say, some of the puzzles are just really fucking frustrating, especially the ones that uh, focus on, like, motion controls and shit. Oh my god, that fucking drives me up the wall, man. Like, I get why they wanted to have it in there, but it's frustrating. And even the bigger puzzles, right, the, the Divine Beasts themselves, they're okay, but it's, it's not anywhere on the same level as, you know... The older games, you know, I'm I'm kind of. It's a very different approach. It's how honestly. I see it. It's yeah, it's a very different approach. I I love the open world aspect of Breath of the Wild and just how free you are to do shit in the order you want. But at the same time, the puzzles suffer because of it. The story suffers because of it too, right? Because yeah, I'm okay. Oh, well, I'm, I'm disappointed honestly in the story. The characters are great, right? Zelda's Bay, but like at the same time, because you don't see it in a specific order the only really the only way you see the story is through the the memories and a bit th by talking th to npcs but well, i feel like that's kind of what they were aiming so disjointed, for though. right it doesn't feel like a true zelda story experience right yeah that's the problem. i mean it I, I can agree with that liberty. but like also also like, in, like think of it like this it's like they were just trying like what they were trying to do with breath of the wild is that they were trying to like just like completely change the whole like zelda formula yeah, and like, they they succeeded. It's a great game. You no, know, I mean, like because it's like what what the charm of Breath of the Wild is. It's how like each experience will never be the same. Like eat like no, you you can get literally lost in, in yeah. the world, right? Well, not just yeah. that. Like every person will have like a different experience. Like they'll find they'll like 
tackle each divine beast differently. They'll like explore these different things differently. And yeah. Yeah. Like, I feel like like they nailed the, the open world lot. aspect. It's just, yeah. I mean, it, it's a great game. I just I hope that for the next one, maybe tone down the freedom just a bit so that the storyline can be a bit more coherent because the gameplay is 11 out of 10 honestly it's just uh the story when you consider that you know twilight princess and shit aquarina of time because I, I know people will crucify me if i don't mention aquarina of time um it's Did just mention it's Majora's not Mask, what's wrong with you i mean Majora's mask was good but i don't know for me the og games that i really love are twilight princess um, Phantom Hourglass. Okay, I know. That, okay, let's be real. The the DS ones are underappreciated. And they are. Also, Spur Tracks is uh, like one of my favorite Zelda games. Is it a link to the past? What was the one that was um, is it was on Game Boy, right? And it was bundled with Four Swords Adventures. Uh, I need I I need to remember. I think it was. Uh... Yeah, it's it's a link to the past. All right, I just. Really oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 that's what it was. Um, uh, there are a lot of, like, underappreciated Zelda games. Uh, and, Bish, what you are saying before, like, I... Skyward Sword's a good game, too. Uh, it's just a lot of people are divided about it. It gets so much it shit. It's... It gets so much shit, though. Well, it's because it's just... It, people. The reason people are very divisive about it is because, like, a lot of the controls rely heavily on the Wii Motion Plus. That and the game itself it feels very linear to a lot of people. And, and so, like, it limits any sort of, ex like, exploration. I, I just want to mention, I give a special shout-out to my favorite Zelda game. Um, Link's, cross what is that? Link's Crossbow Training. <laughs> oh, my God. Was that, was that on the Wii? <laughs> yeah, I was just, I was just memeing. I, I never played that. It was like Do you remember demo. the, like, peripheral that made your Wii Remote look like a bow? Oh, I remember that one. That was yeah. That was it. Was part of Link's crossbow training where it took place in the Twilight Princess universe, and it was just target practice. <laughs> it's a good, game. a shitty duck hunt. It was. It was a ten out of ten IGN. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know. It was clearly like a way to show off the yeah, Wii U's, it, the Wii U, the Wii's gimmick. It's it's like shovelware, right? It's that's pretty much what it is. Can I get into the games that I was playing? No, let's move on. So, but yeah. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> Kevin, I feel so sad. Uh, so basically, yeah, I've been playing a lot of Persona games, really, because I, I've, I've been re you've been replaying uh, P5. I've been replaying P5 as my new protagonist, uh, Kevin Chow. And I don't know why he, he did that. He just decided to. I, name you know, you know, I did because I was like, Kevin. Kevin is never gonna experience Persona because he doesn't have a PS4. So I thought, you know what, I'm gonna name him Kevin. And then my next playthrough is going to be Tyson. And then the next playthrough is going to be Joe. And then I just want to see who's... I, I don't know. I For Joe's playthrough, I'm going to make him get through with uh, the worst girl in the game. Haru. Who is it? Haru. Uh, Haru. Uh, I really like Haru, Haru though. Oh, okay, then. Tell me the character you like, you dislike the most, and I'll play... I'll, I'll make sure he gets with that character. You're making this hard for me. Like, I, I loved every single oh, character. Joe, okay, then I'm not going to do a playthrough with your name in it. Th just uh, make me date everyone. No, Joe, I can't do that. I'm sorry. I'm a, I'm a good guy. Um, but I've been also playing... You make me date the teacher. Joe, no. I'm not going to make you t date the teacher. All right? <laughs> um, what a, a game that I'm really... I, I recently got into because I felt kind of bored with P5. Uh, you know, sometimes with, I, I find with Persona 5 is that... I tend to do the dungeon in a day, so I, I I don't leave the dungeon. I stay in in the dungeon until it's finished, until you have to steal the heart, and then it leaves me with you know the two weeks or the month or whatever left to steal the heart, and then it gives you another month of free time. And it's like, man, I, I just wish they uh, they let me skip the the free time, right? One thing, so I. I I don't know. I just feel that it, it seems like the, a lot of so Let me tell you right now, if you want to 100% this game, you will need all of that free time. Joe, you know, <laughs> I've been I've been maxing out all the, um, what do you call them? All the social links and stuff. And it's just like, I feel that they're not progressing as quickly as I want them to. Like, I really, I just want to get to the next step in that social link straight away. But I don't know how to. Sounds like a personal problem. Probably is. It probably is just me. <laughs> right. Um, so then I decided, you know what? I saw that PQ Persona Q2 um, Theater one, dude. I looked at that and I was like, I have to play the Q2. new Cinema Labyrinth. Yes, man. I I gotta play the first one, and then I played it, and it's a very interesting game. I it's it's different. 
It's, it's very Etrian Odyssey. I, I love Etrian Odyssey, so I'm, I'm a fan Honestly, of Honestly, I, I really stuff. don't like Etrian Odyssey, but the way they implemented it into the Persona system made it feel a lot a lot more tolerable. I, I liked it, and I like the fact that you can bring in more than one um, person. Your party is five members, right? Which is, it's a large party. And not only that, it's the fact that you, Narukami, or your, your main protag can die in battle. It doesn't end the game. Which is it's, it's really cool. I'm not gonna lie. It's very different from Persona, but I just really enjoyed it. The story's amazing so far. I'm still on the first labyrinth. And what I liked about it a lot is that uh, something that a lot of people disliked is the fact that you have to draw the maps with the 3DS stylus. I really like that because it allows for like a lot of customization. Yeah, it allows for a lot of customization. I think as me as a as an architect, like it's very architectural drawing out those maps. And I, I have fun drawing out the map. Like you know, you know what, Joe. I will spend time drawing. I will spend more time drawing out the map than I actually do playing the game. Well, the, 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 you have to realize that you're kind of biased, as you know, uh, an architecture student or graduate, actually, right? <laughs> you know what? What my official title is? I'm a part one architect. Part one. Where? What's the sequel? Where's that? Sequels part two. That's when you do your masters, and then part three is when you do your postgraduate diploma. That's when you get the full certificate. Not full certificate, the full certification and whatever. Wait, so you need to get a fucking PhD to get a full certification? Dude? It's not not PhD, it's just a diploma. It's like a yeah. But how long how long is part one? Dude man, part one is How many seasons, man? Part one is three years of study, part two is two years of study, and then part oh, three okay. part three you do it at work. But the only problem is, right, that part one to get to part two, you need to have one year experience and no one wants to hire you without fucking experience. And then it's a catch 22. <laughs> you're, you're basically, they're asking you, oh, you got to work for free. Fuck. You got to work for free for one year. Basically, that's what they're saying. Work for free for one year and then go and do your masters, which is a, it's a that's bitch. That's why you look for those internships, man. Yeah, that's a, that's a bitch, man. Like, anyway, Kevin, you can start Persona. What? I was kind of, uh, you know, I wasn't listening that much, honestly, because, like, you know, like, my roomie suddenly called me. I was like, yo, you want Chinese takeout? Because we're fucking lazy right now. Is this the roommate that has a uh, persona? No, it's my different roommate. He's a roommate that introduced me to MMOs. He's a guy who's super into Final Fantasy 13. I think Joe's, like, no, judging 13 him. 13 is shit. 13 was a shit game, by the way. I'll, I'll tell him that. No, boy, yo, it's a shit <laughs> no game. No comment. <laughs> okay, 13 2, okay, 13 2 was not that bad. 13 2 is actually. We're talking about 13 okay. 1, the game that had two discs. For the Sam, Xbox. Sam, if you're listening to this, back me up, man. Sam back me up. Discs. Sam, <laughs> if you're listening to this, fuck you. All right? But oh, like, shit. No, no, bitch, the PS3 wait, version wait, wait, wait. has one Ke disc. Ke okay, because it's a Blu ray. But, um, Kevin, who's. Well, no, but the, the Xbox version has three discs. Yeah, I have the Xbox version. Same, I still do. <laughs> Kevin, I want to know something, right? Um, uh. your, other, your other roommate, what's his name? The second one. Yeah. It What's his what? What's his name? His name? Yeah, the Persona guy. Okay, so first, the MMO guy is Anthony, uh, the PS4 guy who has Persona 5 um, is Greg. Greg, or my Gregory. man, Greg. You know Greg? We should hang out, yeah. have some protein. Actually, I mean, the thing is, the thing is, um, it's funny because he has uh, Persona 5, right? And he has a PS4, but he hasn't he hasn't played Persona before. He hasn't played Persona 5, and he hasn't played wait, any wait. Of Persona games. He, has, he, he just has, has the game. game. And he's like... I think someone just gifted it to him, so he just has the game, and he was like, because he, he was asking me the other day about it, he was like, yo, um, <laughs> I've got Persona 5, is it good? Like, t what, can you tell me about the series? So, I, I should just be like, yo, Persona 5 is shit, just let me play that for you, like, you shouldn't waste your time with it. <laughs> <laughs> and where you play it on? That's the question. On, oh, on he has it, a PS4. PS4. No, then what if he watches you play on PS4, he's like, you know, this actually looks really good. I mean, yeah, well... He'll have to wait until I'm done my playthrough. Is, is the PS4 is his PS4 in the living room or is it in his own room? It's not. It's in his own room for now because we have a six. We have a shitty 16 inch TV. Hell yeah, 16 man. inch. That's... Right. So we we okay. went to get uh, a nice 43 inch Dude, from just... from Best Buy. No, go to Costco, so, man. What the hell? The Costco ones were more expensive for some what? reason. Yeah, I know, right? It was because they are. They only have like 4K TVs at Costco, oh, right? Okay. And I'm not, I'm too fucking poor for that shit. So we just got a 1080. Just take out a loan. What's the worst that can happen? I need it for studies. This just take out more loans TV. then. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to playing Persona 5, right? Um, although the hip, I'm not gonna lie, 
when we were recording the Persona 4 episode for Kunai, um, the hipster part of me was like, I should play Persona 3 first. Fuck Just you. Know it is. Fuck <laughs> you. You know, because people are like Persona Three is the shit. It's right? a good game. It's a good the, game, the but you, kid. you don't need to play it in order. I went and played Persona Four, then Persona Three, then I went. Not gonna to lie, okay, not gonna lie, bitch. So. Part of the reason why I want to play Persona Five is because of I guess. Because <laughs> of not what? I really want to play the first and second ones. The second one especially because they're, I heard those are very they're, good. They're good, but I mean, it, it takes time to adjust to the <laughs> graphics. I, I'll be real with you, Joe. It does take yeah. a time, but. Yeah, yeah but, I'm looking forward yeah. to playing Persona 5 because it's obviously going to be great. I still need to finish Breath of the Wild, though, so I have so many fucking games I want to tackle. You know, just forget about in, Breath of the Wild. In terms of, of single Wild, player, I've got Breath of the... Hey, no, you shut your whore mouth. No, sorry. But like, no, no, you, no, you um, better not forget about Breath of the Wild. You Breath, better finish you, you that. You can't forget about Breath of the Wild. It just fucking takes over your life. But um, anyways, I've just got so much shit. Like, I've got Breath of the Wild I'm going to play through right now, and uh, I need, still need to finish... Uh, Hellblade, which shout out is the game you guys should fucking play. It's amazing. Um, what well, is that? The one where, uh, like, every time you die, you uh, it, it's the new Ninja Theory, or it was a Ninja Theory game that uh, focuses on uh, like mental illness and shit and like, Viking combat. The guys who bought you uh, the reboot of DMC, I know they get a lot of shit for that, but like, you know, anyways, what was that what was the full name of it? Uh, Hellblade Senyo Sacrifice. Yes, I heard, I heard, like, basically what happens is every time you die, I think, like, you, it, like, I like think you get a little death. more infected. Yeah, that's it, that's it. But just the, the visuals and shit in that game is amazing. But I digress. Um, I've got that and Breath of the Wild and also Danganronpa, which I won't talk about right now because yes! I, I don't, I don't want to spoil anything, um, to our viewers and to you guys about, you know, what's going on. I want to keep, keep mum about that. Um, how but, far have yeah, those, how far have we got into? The how game? far have you played? I can't tell you. No, you can tell us. Uh, you can tell us how yes, far. Yes, yes, you can. You can I, I think you're obligated to tell me. Don't tell us what happened, but tell us the chapter. Don't be like. It's like chapter three, chapter three right now. Oh, but oh. um, oh. anyways, that like far. that's that's to be discussed a little bit on the Zen Rope episode, right? Just surprise, but. Anyways, I've got those that I'm working through in terms of single player games, yeah? And I've also got like Guild Wars 2, as I said, and Rainbow Six that I'm playing as multiplayer. So it's just like so much shit that I want to play and so little time, right? I also, you know, as any good PC gamer, I've got like a backlog of like fucking oh my 20 God, some games that it. I haven't fucking touched yet that you I know, feel like, really only... guilty about. <laughs> You know, like, I've only, I've been playing, like, I told you about the games I've been playing recently, but, like, I have oh, yeah. well, so well, many games you have I still need to play through more. And, what well, brings I need you to, shame? I need to continue Hollow Knight. I need to start playing oh, yeah. Killing 4 2. I need to play more Vermintide 2. Uh, How I is Vermintide? Like, people have been hyping that shit up so much. I've only played Ver I've only played Vermintide 2, but, like, I really enjoy it. It's very fun with friends. Like, there's, there's a lot of depth oh. to it, and it, it feels very fun. It's just so there's a lot to do in it. Nice. It's great. Nice. But uh it's just a, it's thematically and gameplay wise, it's just phenomenal. But uh mm. Yeah, I also need to finish Strider. I need to finish uh Doki Doki Lyric Club. Do you, do you <laughs> that really haunts you, to, man. Do you really need to considering the meme that that game has become? I mean, it's not mean because it, it, it is good. So I, I, I'm obligated to because I've, I've gone too far into it to back down. How, how can you neglect Monica Senpai? You know, I'll, you I'll tell you monster. something. Like, there's a lot of games on the PC that I, I haven't really gotten and played. Like, everyone's giving gifting me Let's games be real, bitch. Steam. Like, the 90% of the reason, like, you have an excuse because your PC is, like, trash. No offense. You think, you we, think my we PC all know is that. trash. I tell you, I'll tell you my specs now. It's a workstation, but it's well, not a gaming. It's a, you know, well, it's not really a workstation, but it's built for like. You better not tell me your max specs because then I will leave this Discord. I got right an now. i7. Yeah, no, we're fucking, ki we're kicking you from this call and we're got, finishing this episode. I got an i7 dual core. Just talk about your Mac. Um, I got a. Wait, whoa, whoa, hang on, hang on. You were like fucking calling. You were like being all, you know, giving Joe that attitude for having an i7 earlier. Did you say it was what a dual core or a quad core? It's a dual. Yeah, was it's it, a dual core. It, I oh, think. Okay, I think it's okay. a dual core. I haven't checked. I don't think it's a quad core. I've got 16 gigs of RAM, and I got okay. a GTX uh, 760, I think. It's not... What? Yo, that, you can that's, run that's, shit on that. that. You, you can run a lot of games on that. What, you run a lot you know of what games, it is? Dude. I fucked up my PC from the renders. I used While I was at uni, 
um, instead of using their rendering machines, I was like, you know what? I'm going to do some renders on this shit. I was Why? doing, I, look, I'll tell you something. There was a technique that you do in architecture school when you're doing line renders um, of drawings. Instead of... Wait, you're trying to do line renders on a fucking 760? <laughs> dude, dude. Fuck. Like the, what did you do the, to your poor PC? I want to hear. I want to hear his explanation. The for uni, this. the like, uni had quadros and stuff, like really good, like high end graphics and high end Xeons and stuff. But what, what basically what I did was, I wasn't just doing line. Try to run it on your fucking Pentium. Look, I, yeah, on the Pentium <laughs> processor. I wasn't just doing line renders of just normal lines, right? These were three D models that I w took the wireframe from. I done it in ink and paint, and that's a material in three DS Max, right? And then from there, I done set the resolution to. I didn't send, didn't set it to 1080p. I didn't set it to 300 DPI. You know what I set it to? I set it to four, 40,000 pixels by 40,000 pixels. That was the resolution. Did it never occur to you that you might fuck up something in your PC machine to do this? And, and you know why I did that, Kevin? I'll explain why I did that. I done it to that, and then I went into Photoshop and I rescaled it to 1080p. And the reason why I did that was because you re you get a really sharp image. It, you you technically you can't see it on your screen, but when you print it, it's really fine. Um, because obviously there is no screen that can output that many pixels unless you connect screens together. But you know what I mean? There's like I'm going I'm going beyond 8K. I'm going beyond like. Just have a fucking wall of iPads. That's <laughs> basically what I what I was rendering for. And because the uni asks for really fine detail and stuff, and your professors ask for that. So I, I was kind of pressured, and that what fucked up my PC. And then, for some reason, I was told that all the architects have MacBooks. And I was like, what? Oh, you can't even fucking render, render on a Mac. Yeah, on, honestly, like, I don't mean a Mac on... Sorry, I don't mean a shit on Mac users, but I, my only experience working with Macs is I had this, like, this introductory uh, game developer course on, on UDK, right? We were trying to fucking do sh basic shit in UDK. Um, like, just like... Wait, UDK? Yeah. And What's UDK? Unreal Development Kit. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Yeah. And, yo, I f like, you could burn yourself on the fucking chassis. Oh, but you, you, know, you know why that is? It's because... Right? You could fry an egg. You, you it know was why, ridiculous. You know why that is? It's because the, the fan curves and stuff, like... They would rather have your machine stay quiet than kick up the fans. That's how that's how Apple thinks. They're always like that. But I, I don't know. I'll be honest with you. It's a good machine. I'm using it right now. It's a good machine for edits. Like it does edits like that. If you're editing on Photoshop, oh, yeah. it's really good. Um, if you're, I just mean like spec wise, right? It's, al it's always been just overpriced, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I guess the part of the PL is just the software, the right? Because it has lots no, of good software and like shit. Like the software and the fact that they're, it's just used by professionals everywhere. I think even if I'm using AutoCAD, I'm just using uh, making line drawings, it's fine. But if you're doing any sort of... The fact that 3DS Max can only run on Windows says something, right? And that's that's something that I use a lot. So yeah. Max aren't And the there, are, there aren't any super high-end Macs, are there? Mm -hmm. right? You can't... There aren't any, like, equivalents for, you know, like... Uh, the, the titan v no there is there is for like, like I'll, I'll be for gonna, Macs, look there there's the macbook right? there's sorry not macbooks there's the mac pro and then there's the imac pro so you know the the one that looks like a trash can and then there's the imac pro <laughs> that looks like a, a regular yeah. imac but it's just gray they have xeons and i think they got like the oh shit, really okay. good radeon graphics in there they for some reason they don't use nvidia but they 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 go with the amd on that one so it it's um but the, that Mac Pro, I think the iMac Pro is like five grand. So it's expensive. So compared to a regular, like, a, you know, if you were to make your own PC with similar specs, you'd be saving be all, a lot cheaper. A lot right? cheaper, yeah. So you're, as you said, you're paying for experience. You're paying for, I don't know, software, really. Um, yeah. well, what was I saying? I was, I was talking about, what was I talking about? Talking about. Oh wait, yeah. what what games you had in your backlog? I think. Um, I have, you know, Honey Pop. I really want to finish it. I have. I know, need to foot. I can finish Honey Pop now because, like, okay, last year, right? I, I fucking oh, my apartment was a shit hole last year because I lived in like uh, student accommodations, but it wasn't like that. My uni's student accommodation was like this this third party student accommodation, so it was like pretty clean and nice and shit, but it was so expensive, and I. I had half a room, right? I didn't even have a full fucking room. So I, I didn't have, you know, like a locked door and shit. Mm. And honestly, 
Um, and Honey Pop is not a game that you should play if you don't, you know, have your your space. That's true. Right? Yeah, and, and the tissues Depends. on hand. Depends. Uh, like, space in the front or space behind? That's true, Joe. You know, I, I would... <laughs> I, I would, you know, the best way to play Honey Pop is is currently the way that I'm I'm sitting now. My this is my door. Kevin and, and Joe can see my door is right there. So if anyone needs to open the door as I'm playing Honey Pop, they can't open the door. They'll hit me. They won't see the screen. So I'm I'm lucky in that sense. So that's the do best they have place. do they have locks in the UK? Yeah, we have. Can locks. You guys lock your door. <laughs> we have locks, but yeah, it, it kind of it, it's, it's a, complete op- it's my a bit shady. Opposite like because... if you lock your door. Yeah, people are gonna think you're you're masturbating. Let's be real. Let's be real. Like, you can't be locking your door. I mean, man. why? I don't. Know. I don't have the problem because I don't live with my family. Well, right? I'm like, I live with two other guys, man. Like, well, well, we, you know, <laughs> you know. I mean, little do they know. <laughs> you know, I, I'll I'll tell you something, Gavin. If they lock their doors, you think, shit, man. Greg, Greg's jerking one off. Or Sam, Sam is no, jerking one just, off. No, it's just, it's just. I don't know. You're you're older, bitch. Maybe you're from a different generation, you know. Oh my god. But lo- locking doors is, you know, it's it, it's standard in practice. In my day, they used to put ties on the door. Put what? Ties. You know, you never heard about that. You know, when you put a tie on the door, it's like you're getting laid. Is that something you guys do? That, that's, that's such obscure terminology. I think that's just a fucking. That's an, maybe that's like a British thing. I don't know. No, man. it's an American fucking, thing, man. Come on. But uh, <laughs> but yeah. So you wanna you wanna finish Honey Pop? I wanna finish Honey Pop, and I wanna finish a bunch of other games. Kevin sent me some. Such as. Um, I don't know, man. I, what did I send you again? It's been so I, long. I can't even remember. Like I I got you PUBG. It's been a, it was a while PUBG. ago. Kevin, um, Joe sent. Can me you some run games. PUBG? Can you not run PUBG uh, on a seven six? Because the reason why I haven't played PUBG is uh, a. You know, you know what you I could, want to play. I wanted to play. I wanted to play Ori in the Blind Forest because I, I gifted that to him. Yes. For gifting me Zero Skin. And, and it's such a beautiful and game. And I didn't play it yet. It is. Because because my PC fucking can't no. even open properly anymore. It's like it's no, 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 bitch. It, it, it's not that graphically intensive. Like it'll, no, it's honestly like the one of the best games you'll ever play. I'm not let's even be kidding. Real. You know the the what's it called Panzer Madals? Like my computer was struggling huh? to play Panzer Madals. Like you you know the 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 Panzer game, it, the one with the girls. The one I gave you, Kevin. No. Kevin. Oh, the, yeah, the, the one with the girls. Yeah, it's so specific, man. I know that one. Did, I fucking did love I, did that I one, man. Did I send you that game? Please tell, huh? me, please tell me I sent you that yeah, game. Yeah, you sent it to me. That game is such a meme. And it's just... I never got to fucking play it past, like, the first 10 minutes because how the fuck are you supposed to play that when... And, and you know that my... You guys know that my roommate was fucking obnoxious last well, year, Well, your right? German um, roommate. Fuck that guy. My... Man. My... My German ro- roommate from... What is it? Köln? Yeah. Oh man, dude. Cologne, my my boy. He's a fucking douche, and you know it's not again. It's not the type of game that you can play unless you have some, you know, some space I mean, and privacy. How, how do you think I right. feel, Kevin? Like you're looking at my you're looking at my webcam right now. The door is like right behind me. Yeah, but you know how your your parents know that you were you know weeb trash. You know, for me it's like you know my mom knows I'm I weeb got... trash, but like. <laughs> <laughs> Look, we don't we don't talk about all the posters that are not within view. Wait, hang on. Do you have any Do you have any questionable posters? No, I, I know no. that you're Christian, right? I wonder. The, the, like the most questionable one I have is Jesus the posts. panty socking one that I haven't hung up yet. It's the one that that says like what, Yeah, you have to hang up some Jesus churches, posters. Bitches. Compensate. Yeah, you you know? know, I actually like, have like last Jesus year. Posters, I, I you know those, I, I those had posters, I don't know why, Jesus but posters. I don't know why last year. I was. <laughs> I remember why now. I I was watching The Crown, right? So I was like, uh-huh. "Fuck yeah, The Crown's really good." So I ordered a fucking portrait, of the Queen. What? The so I had what? it above my bed. Excuse me. <laughs> I had I had best girl above my bed. Wait, 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 wait. Are we talking why? about World War Two Queen? Or are we talking about modern day Queen? I'm talking about. I mean, do I, are you saying it makes a difference? It does. She's the best girl, nonetheless. No, it doesn't. But <laughs> look, 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 Kevin. I I just want to say something here, right now, right here, right now. The queen in World War Two was best girl. Not anymore. Have you seen the queen as a mechanic? Uh, God damn. Anyways, you guys need to watch The Crown because Claire Foy and... Sorry, that guy from Doctor Who, I forgot his name, do one hell of a job. Uh, and it, it's a pretty great show. So, but wait, wait, anyways. wait, wait, wait. So you bought the queen. You bought a I don't have it anymore in my room. Uh, right now I only have like... I have aviation posters. I have... And the queen. Um... I have a different poster. 
Uh, it's gonna obey poster and back above my bed, but no weeby shit so, so far. Pre- like, I mean, there, there's an attack on Titan poster I haven't put up yet. Wait, 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 wait. Is that the attack on? I transi- wait, wait, wait. Is that the attack on Titan poster you were supposed to give me? Yeah, that I, I bought oh. like three years ago at Anime North. Yeah, but the thing is, Oof. shipping was it was fucking expensive, how man. Much, like the shipping was more much, cost more than the posters. The shipping? shipping was like fifteen dollars. Whoa, that's like nothing. That is literally nothing. I will pay that shipping, Kevin. You bitch. <laughs> Kevin, that's such a small poster. Jesus Christ. Man. It is. That's why I was like, I'm not fucking paying $15 for this shit. It's like, what? <laughs> you know, is like, that A4 or A5? No, it's not A4. That's like a... What is it? A3. We, we don't use those sizes over here, oh, right? Okay. Um, that's, that's like, like a what? letter size. Um, no, that's not letter size. It's like, a, well, I think, 45 by 30 centimeters. Or like 50 by like 30 centimeters. I don't know, man. But yeah, it was so small. Right? I didn't... I didn't want to send that much shit on uh, for a tiny poster. Cool, fair enough. I mean, one, if you, you know what, I'll make you a deal. If you get a good fucking PC, or just replace your dying GPU, <laughs> right? Because your RAM's good, your processor's good. Um, I can't replace the I'll GPU. Send you shit. It's it's a laptop, Kevin. <laughs> it's it's a laptop. I can't replace the fucking GPU. rip. Ripperoni. Unless I do some desoldering and then <laughs> resolder. Resort of the GPU. Um, For those of you who don't know, like, like Joe's like, guys, we don't, I don't want to talk about sh- bi- like Bish's shitty dying PC. All right, let's move on. But, you know, for all you two OG listeners of the podcast still with so, us, so basically uh, you know that we're on tangents. No, 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 of the OG podcast, right? Uh, so the, the Kaiji Tang days, like when before wait, 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 Joe wait, and I. Wait, 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 what did you call him? What did you call? I just I mentioned Kaiji Tang. Name, I, didn't, I didn't call William Kaiji. His name Kaiji is Tang. not Kaiji. His name is not Kaiji. Like Kaiji. It's Kaiji. Get it right, son. It's not Kaiji Tang. Man, I'm shit with names. It's you know, not Kaiji you Tang. can't even pronounce. Yo, you mess up anime names wait, wait, like wait. every other can, episode. Can say, you, can, you don't get to talk may shit, I say man. Something? I only mess up anime names in the record. Ah, fuck my, my. That's true. Yeah, you only in, mess it up in the recordings because recording. when Bish practices. <laughs> Before the recording, he gets it on point, but then like I, I do, just like this. I do it as a meme because Crunchyroll tell me not to do it, so I do it. Yeah, before it, like the recording, he's like, Eren Jaeger, and after during the recording, he's like Eren Jaeger. You know, you go you go like full American. No offense, Joe. <laughs> Never go full American. Yeah, man, because Americans. Are... I mean, us too. Us too. Canadians are pretty shit at names when out. No, 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 I remember. No, like I. So when I think what Kevin was thinking about, he wasn't thinking about uh KG Tang. He was thinking about Ito Kaiji. No, 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 <laughs> not that. Kaiji is pretty good though. It, it, it's nice. What are you guys excited for in terms of games that are coming out this year or, or even next year? Like, okay, can I respond for Joe and I? Because I like I know what Joe's gonna say, and it's going to. It starts with Smash and ends with Bros. That's not that's not all though. I have uh, a lot of things to talk about. Uh, I'll I'll just start first since I'm already taking the initiative. Uh, I uh, I so I'm excited for like a couple Switch games. Like of course Smash Bros. Like it's, it's pretty high up there. Like the new, like old Smash Ultimate looks like the hype of shit, and I am excited for it. Yeah, uh, no, but then like, hmm? it's just I, I really like what they're doing for it. They're adding. They're adding every character from series history, like even the clones. Like it, they're they're really then trying again, to make though, this like, like the they're, ultimate game. They're adding them is like uh, what are they called in the new game? Uh, Shadow Fighters? Is that it? Echo Fighters. Echo Fighters. There we go. Echo Fighters. Right. Yes. Well, I mean, it so, gives them the opportunity to add like certain characters that but people wanted. Does that really count? They... Does that count though? That's the thing, right? Because they're not. I, if I remember correctly, I... Echo Fighters are basically just skins, right? Like. Samus and Dark Samus. Well, I, right? I want. They're, I feel like they're um, a little more than skins, though. Like it gives like players a lot more versatility for what how, they want to no, play. No, but with. like the, the move sets and shit are the same, though, right? Like it's not like Ryu and Dark Ryu, where like, at least like Dark Ryu has like different like uh, you know frames and shit, different moves, different combos. Well, let me put it like this: so like you can have like a, a Dark Samus variant for Samus, right? But what you're missing out on are like the unique animations and like like poses that Dark Samus has. So I feel like what like a, the benefit of an Echo Fighter like 
is not just in appearance, but it's also in just how they like satisfy the player and how they like they bring something new to it, even if it isn't like directly related to the gameplay. Yeah, I mean, it, it certainly brings variety, right? Because like, who's gonna fucking choose Crom if you have Lucina? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> well, no, I, mean, I feel like it's the other way around. Some people like Crom a lot more than Lucina. But uh, I mean, I'm, but... I'm pretty sure those people don't exist. But yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But uh, but anyway, like so. And another game I, I'm excited for is uh, The World Ends With You Final Remix, which is coming Bro. to the Switch. Okay, you know what? I, I don't know why I'm so hyped, because I've never played it on the DS, but it's the complete... the oh, It looks so fucking good. I've always had, like, an eye for that game, right? But I just never went out to get it, right? I've kind of neglected my 3DS, but now that's not on Switch, right? The, just the game itself is already... It looks amazing, but I don't know, man. It just... It says something about how hype and fucking successful the Switch is that, honestly, I'm considering getting remakes of older games that I've never considered before simply because it's on the Switch, because you get so much freedom and versatility on uh, when, where you want to play it, who you want to play it with, you know? Right, right, yeah. But, uh, but like, it, so here's something you guys should, uh, should know about me. So... As you guys all know, I absolutely adore the Non-Europa series. It's probably, like, my favorite series ever. However, none of those games are my favorite game. And my favorite game is actually The World Ends With You. Because the reason The World Ends With... I consider The World Ends With You to be my favorite game of all time is because it introduced me to a lot of things. It introduced me to a more personal form of storytelling in games. It kind of introduced me to the idea of, like, it, it showed me how engaging a story can be. It kind of opened my eyes to, like, start, like, it, it kind of opened my eyes to starting storytelling as, like, a sort of hobby. Honestly, Joe, just recently, uh, question I've been... for you. Question for you right now. Did you hmm? play Persona before or after uh, Old Ones With You? I played Persona 4 after the Old Ones With You. Oh, okay, okay. Because I was like, damn, th do you, in your opinion, does it beat persona or like in terms of i would say i would say it upon? does it's because it's like it it uses it has a lot of themes in it like about personal growth Complex about opening themes. up to the people around you just like expressing yourself how you want to like it, it's being yourself believing your friends well i mean i i know it's sounding a <laughs> lot of, it's not sounding very no, cliched no, no, no. but it's like i i just felt like so with the with the main character, Neku Sakuraba, I feel like he started out as a very, like, I mean, he was emo as hell, but he started out, like, as a character who was very, like, neglectful. He, like, he wanted to, he didn't care about others. He felt like others were, like, getting in his way. And he that felt... That sounds like every edgy middle schooler I've oh, known. Oh, yeah, well, <laughs> let me finish. Like, it, he, he basically, because he, he's afraid of, like, getting hurt. He's afraid of Definitely like, getting, every, getting connected to somebody too much to the point where it it hurts him. It makes him mm -hmm. feel horrible. Uh, and but, I feel like his growth from like the beginning of the game mm -hmm. to the end of the game just kind of shows how like how much people like how much people can do to kind of change the kind of person you are. Okay. Like honestly, and, I, I'm glad to hear that you to hear you speak the praises of the story. Honestly, because um, I think, for me, is with most it's people, a game, like, the, the yeah. thing that catches your eye, for, like, is the aesthetic, right? It's so beautifully drawn and shit, and the music is a core element, and it, just hearing that it has a great start of it is really encouraging. So, like, my question for you is, you know, if I gave you, like, 20 seconds here, right, to sell me and other people on the whole dynamic suit, like, what, a, what is the best part about the game, aside from the story that you've already talked I about? I can't. I can't answer that really. It's really the best part of it is up to you. Okay, but you know, what was there nothing that like st stuck out in particular with, for you when you well, I mean, played all, it? Like, like pretty much everything stuck out to me. Like the music, the environments, like just exploring like a like a fictional yet like heavily inspired Shibuya. The, like talking with these characters, like learning about their motives, their desires, and like why they're in the game, it, like in the Reapers game. It was just. I feel like it's really up to you about how you want to appreciate the story because I feel like each part of each part of the game tells a story of its own. Nice. Okay. And depending on how you perceive it, it it's really like it's a personal experience in a lot of ways as well. Kind of like it'll 
it'll reawake, it'll awaken something inside you, make you feel something you never really felt before. You know what? Other game is also very personal and awakens things inside of you. Honey what? Pop. Oh my God. Also a great game. Uh, shout out to Honey Pop. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm sure it makes you feel very good, Kevin. <laughs> yes. I'm sure it awakens something very deep inside you. Or your loins. No, that's fine. I mean, so Smash Bros and, and that. Anything yeah, else? Yeah, but like, I just, I, well, I just want to talk a little more about it before I like end it. So the reason I'm excited for the Switch version specifically is because, uh, well, actually, I'll, there's one more thing. I'll I'm sorry. I love this game. I need to talk about every reason why I love it. So it's so again, At this like, point, I Queenix think besides... just fucking hire you to promote <laughs> the fucking remaster. Yeah, no, because besides the game and like everything about it, I think like, so if I were to choose something that stuck out to me the most, like if I had to, like besides story, it'd probably be the music. Because the music kind of opened me up to other forms of music. Like, it kind of broadened my horizons. Like, I never really listened to much music when I was younger. And when I played The World Ends With You for the first time, I I was here. I, I feel like I was hearing, like, art. Like, something that, like, it was just so new to me. Something that was inspiring. Like, enlightening. And it, it caused me to broaden my horizons a little bit. Like, it caused me to, like... It convinced me to listen to other artists, like, listen to how they make music. Uh, like, listen to artists, like, not just in America, but in, like, other countries. Like, it it made me see music in a very different way. And I feel like, in the end, like, it, it kind of made me, like, realize that, like, you know, music isn't really just something you hear. It's something that, like, also tells a story. So it was, a, it was like a coming-of-age game for you. Yeah, like it, 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 like it defines, it defines life, like life and death. Like it, De it defines wow. like a cycle. Damn, that's. I mean, that's kind of like the, because it, it's the biggest. It's one of the biggest inspirations for uh, a story I'm actually writing. Okay, what well, I, I mean, I'm just so fucking torn though, right? Because there's just like there's so many good games that are coming out, especially for the Switch, right? Like fucking, there's already Smash Bros. There's Diablo three, which I already mentioned. I really want to get. Uh, there's also in, uh, coming out autumn 2018 is, you know, as you said, World Ends With You, and then after that, in March, you know, there's fucking, what is it, uh, Fire Emblem, right, the new Fire Emblem for Switch, Three Houses, oh my god, right, which is what I'm personally hyped up for, right, um, like, I, I told you, I've been getting into story writing as a hobby recently, and I, and I, it's, a lot of it is centered around music and how we perceive it in our life and like how it can kind of define a lot of who we are like our like our our own lives from from the time we're born to the time we're dead like the way we express our feelings emotions like the way we act like it, that's kind of what i'm going for with the story i'm in and like i'm writing and the world ends with you is a big inspiration for that uh, that said, so the reason I want, I'm excited for a Switch version specifically is because they're actually continuing the story for Final Remix. There's one character they're, they're focusing on, right? If I Correct me if I'm wrong, but from what I understand, this is kind of like uh, Persona 4 versus Persona 4 Golden in that they added I like, wouldn't, uh, uh, well, I wouldn't say, it's a little different uh, because the world ends with you, Final Remix, uh, oh, so the character they're focusing on was teased back in, back when Solo Remix was released, which was like years ago. It was Solo Remix for those of you who don't know is an iOS slash Android port that they want that they were they're basically bringing they're porting to the Switch. Uh, of course, with additional content. And so they teased at the end of the World Ends with You Solo Remix the character that they're showing recently in the promotional promotional videos and the the card like it just showed her her holding mr mew and a sign that said new seven days for years we didn't know what that meant but with final remix we're finally gonna have we're finally gonna understand why that was like what that teaser meant and we're gonna finally like we're, we're, it's gonna be a completely new scenario it isn't just like like the definitive story we're getting a whole new scenario that has her at the center of it which is going to be very interesting. 
But uh, well, and then the last, like the last couple games, I'm really excited for at the moment. Uh, I have a, I have a couple others, but just so we can kind of move on, I, I do want to talk about like two notable ones. Kingdom Hearts three, of course, because I absolutely love Kingdom Hearts. It is like it's something I got into not too long ago, and it has since taken over my life. It's really, it's really high up there with like Danganronpa for me. It's just such an amazing series, and I adore it. And but, and then finally, I'm excited for a game called Soundfall. Never heard it, of it. Okay. Uh, so basically, Soundfall is this rhythm-based action game that uh, relies on you pressing the beat in order to, in, in order to go through the stages and like defeat enemies. And I, 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 I definitely want to get my hands on that just so like I can see. It, it's more of like just for to help myself with reference material because I want to turn my story into a game someday. And so I feel like playing this will kind of give me an idea of like something I should be aiming for, something I should adjust. Like I want to like kind of get a feel of what action and rhythm would feel like. But uh, yeah, like that's, that's, that's pretty much, that's pretty much it. I talked a lot about the wilderness with you, but like it just has a, has a lot of meaning to me and I felt like it, it needed the exp explanation it deserved. <laughs> Those were basically my thoughts. I know it, it kind of dragged a bit with the whole, like, the world ends with you talk, but I, I feel like it just needed... I, I felt like it was it's just a game that resonates with me. It's a game that, like, relate I relate to in a lot of ways, so I, I felt you just needed... The explanation need like, the justice it deserved. <laughs> but now... I will allow you to talk about your favorite games, and not favorite games. Well, no, not favorite games. The games you're excited for. Um, in terms of games I'm excited for, I mean, basically, again, Smash Bros. Because I mean, I think everyone's, even casual gamers, right? We've all played Smash Bros. At it's one a game that you can't really another. hate. <laughs> yeah, you can't really hate it. You can't really escape from it, right? It's like one of the party games, right? Nintendo is just dominant when it comes to to party games. It's like that along with Mario Party. Right, it's just a staple of well, um, my, more, my childhood meetings. Some more than shit. others. <laughs> some more than others, obviously. Mario Party Two. But... <laughs> oh yeah, no, we don't talk about that. Oh, well, um, Mario. Anyways. We're getting Super Mario Party though, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thankfully. But I'm pretty hyped up for Super Smash Bros. Simply because, um... oh, man, just again, I hate to fucking sound like you know a tool, like just singing the phrases of the Switch, but just. It is the console for Smash Bros, right? You can just... I can imagine my, my school's calf being filled with, you know, just impromptu tournaments and shit, you know? It just feels like such a great console for a competitive uh, brawler, like, you know, SSB. Y'all know what's so and, good about it? It's... So, you know how with Smash 4 we had a 3DS version and a Wii U version? Like, Smash Ultimate is basically... It's a combination of both, basically. It's the best of both worlds. Um, but also, just the, the amount of yeah, the amount of content is just astounding. I remember watching the Nintendo Switch Direct, and I was like, man, I fucking wish uh, Street Fighter V launched with this much content, right? Um, just all the characters, right? The Echo Fighters, and the map selection is fucking huge. I think it's like 300, 300 plus stages, right? Because they include every single stage from all the past games. I don't know how many they said they, were, they added so far, but I know like it's it, it feels like they're basically mashing like every game together into one. It's wonderful. That's bas it's the it's the ultimate smash, and I'm glad that it's coming on like, like it's coinciding with the Switch, right? They really want to make the best version possible of Switch because. Uh, sorry, of Super Smash Bros. Because the Switch is just the perfect console for this series. It's a perfect game for right? perfect console for anything, really. Just like the, because of the portability and the exactly like the home console exactly, but gimmick. More well, so for yeah, okay. you know like <laughs> games that have such an emphasis on local co-op like this. And there's also Dragon Ball Fighters, which I'll get into a little bit later. But um, yeah, 300 stages, right? And there's a new mode, right, where you can you can switch between stages mid game, mid match. Right, so there's, and you know, in terms of the music, there's like they include all the songs and shit, and there's there's even the fucking like music players. There's you can so start, much you know, music in it. I don't I don't want to imagine, huh? <laughs> yeah, there's oh my god. 
You guys, are you guys are talking but, about Waluigi, but we still haven't gotten Ryan in the, inside the game yet, and that breaks my heart. You know what? I don't really care because I know right now that I'm going to be maining Samus and Meta Knight because those two are my OG mains. I'm, I'm intrigued by Palutena and... I love um, Palutena. So good. Yeah. Palutena and Krom. I know I was shooting on Krom, but, you know, he's your boy. He's your boy. Um... But yeah, it's just there's so much content, right? And it seems like the fucking perfect console for it. The only downside I'd say is that you have to fucking pay for a Nintendo Switch online. And I don't know why, right? But yeah. from, a few, from a few months ago, everyone was like, okay, I guess um, Smash Bros. is coming out in September, right? Because that's that logically they'd want to release Smash at the same time as Nintendo Switch Online to promote Switch Online. Right? But well, I mean, it's also smart to release in December because of the holiday season. Exactly, but I, everyone was expecting it to release for Smash Bros. release in uh, September, right? Because that's when they announced that Switch Online would be launching. But I digress. Uh, yeah, just I'm super excited for that, but also Dragon Ball Fighters, right? I've never been a huge Dragon Ball fan, but it's just. Um, Arc System Works knows how to work their magic. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to scratch that MVC itch, right? Because um, let's be real, MVCI was a fucking disappointment for like, everyone, right? And, you know, I'm not going to say no to more fighters on the Switch. And it's it's gearing up to be a pretty solid console for the FGC, right? Obviously, it's missing, like, Tekken 7, it's missing SF5, um, but it's it's got a pretty solid selection. And I'm hoping that they will be able to bring those, those big hitters onto the Switch, right? But in terms of 2D fighters right now, um, like anime fighters, it's it's pretty fucking solid, right? So I, just, I hope that continues. But uh, I think the main game that I'm hyped up for, not just on the Switch, but just in general for next year, is without a doubt, Fire Emblem Three Houses. That was the one game that I was just dying to find out about at E3 this year. Right, because we had, we knew fucking nothing about it up until and we definitely right? they just said they definitely delivered. Yeah, um, I'm intrigued by the story. Right, I love like I'm not gonna say that I'm a veteran of the series, but I loved uh, Sacred Stones. I loved uh, you know the way that they reinvented the series in a way with Awakening and especially um, Fates. Right, huge fan of Fates. Oh, so, interesting. I hear I hear a lot of people like it, it's controversial. Yeah. I mean, it's still well liked, but I, I guess it gets a lot of flack for you know the. It, it takes the waifuness of the of Awakening up to up to eleven, but in terms of gameplay and story, I love the story in Fates, right? I see. So, um, Fire Emblem's always been really solid in terms of story, and the, the gameplay speaks for itself. You know, it's solid. It's pretty much right? it's one just... of the like most iconic tactical RPGs. Exactly. Yeah. So just. I know that I'm not going to be disappointed in the series if it's anything like the past few entries, right? And just, again, having the option to play it on the go with me, on the on the train, for example, but also being able to play it on the big screen again for the first time in years, right? Cause I think the, the last entry on console was Radiant Dawn on the Wii, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, well, that's a I think while that was ago. Kind of, yeah. It was, it was a while ago, right? So just having this, again, this flexibility of this convenience of having it on the go, but also having the beautiful graphics, right, uh, on the big screen, especially for the the support conversations and shit. It'd be nice to have that on the big screen, you know? Yeah. Um, so yeah, we haven't heard much about it, but just what little, with what little they have teased us like with in the trailer, I the am team. fucking hyped. Yeah. And needless to say, uh, Honorable mention to, to Siege, of course, right? It's the game that I've been consistently sticking with for the past few years. It's, it fills the void that Kai had left when I ditched that series, right? Um, what game is this? Yeah, that's that's basically it, right? There are some... Hmm? What game was this? Pardon? Rainbow Six Siege. Oh, Rainbow Six. Yeah. Oh, I mean, isn't that already out, though? It's already out, but just like the like more content for it, right? Um, oh, okay, okay. Grim Sky is coming out soon, and shit, and just uh huh, yeah. It it Rainbow Six is basically what uh, Final Fantasy Final Fantasy fourteen is to me, you know, for you. If you oh, compare, okay, right? Yeah, 
But yeah, other than that, I mean, I could go on and on about games talked about at E3, but in terms of you know, games coming out soon, that's basically what I have on my list. That's what I'm really hyped up for at the moment, right? Mm -hmm. Also, Valkyrie Chronicles 4, but <laughs> we have a surprise for you guys somewhere down the line next year. But don't you worry, we'll get your fix. But Bish, honestly, you've been pretty quiet recently. I, I want to know what you're hyped up for in the coming months. And you know, the ones that I'm very excited for tends to be Spider-Man PS4. Uh, oh my god, I forgot about Spider-Man. You know why? Because I think it's Insomniac that's uh, making it. Yeah, um, Insomniac's making it. It looks amazing. So I'm I'm excited for that. Because there hasn't been a good Spider-Man game since the Spider-Man 2 game on PS2. Which is, I, hands down, best Spider-Man game. I love I loved that game. I love Spider-Man 2. How did it live up to that reputation, though? Do you think that it's going to be able to beat it? Yeah, of course. Or... of course. It's, it's, it was a PS2 game. And in essence, it was a shit PS2 game. This looks interesting. Uh, <laughs> You're right. It was it was such a meme of a game. It was just it, it was so bad it was good. Um, no, but I, I enjoyed that game. But this seems a lot like it. Very similar in terms of free free to not free to play, uh, open world element. Free roaming. Free roaming. Um, and the fact that it's just the combat system looks so sexy and the costumes. Oh man, the costumes. That's I think when you play a Spider-Man game. You're interested in looking at the buildings, and I know it's going back to the architecture again, but looking at the buildings, swinging around, I don't know, it's just, it, it's it, what kind of got me interested in Attack on Titan, the fact that you can swing around and stuff, um, but another game I'm also really excited for, other than Smash, I actually quite, I'm excited for Smash, I think that's the game that's going to get me onto Nintendo Switch, because I really did like um, the Smash on um, Wii U. I enjoyed that. I'm not gonna lie. Um, oh, I didn't know you had that. I didn't. I didn't have it, but I, I, I used to play it a lot with friends. Um, oh, okay, okay. Especially, you know, that mode where you, there was like more than four players. It just got, eight player smash. Yeah, it was. It was. Uh, it was manic. Yeah, it's, I think it's really insane. I, I I love playing that, and I think also what other game I was excited for. I'm excited for Muso Orochi Three or Warriors Orochi Three, and. Um, Mainly because it's a new Warriors Orochi thing, it's kind of going to take away from the disappointment that was Dynasty Warriors Eight and uh, Warriors All Stars. Still salty, I see. I'm, no, I'm fucking salty about it. You're talking about, um, you know, Legend of Zelda, how it had um, this free world, free th what do you call it, free roam element and the open world, and how you can do anything in any order. Dynasty yeah, Warriors yeah. did that as well, and it just didn't didn't do well because the story suffered. You're taking the main core element of what made Dynasty Warriors great, and you've removed it in place for something that is cheap. And I I agree with what Jim Sterling says. Like he the guy is a really like he's a polarizing opinion, but I agree 100 percent on on what they did with the with the franchise. It wasn't good with that, and I'm expecting them to create a Dynasty Warriors nine. That's just back to its roots so looking at Warriors Orochi they're doing the same sort of thing with Warriors Orochi they're bringing it back with its roots um, I'm, I'm also excited for there was one other game that I was really excited for I forgot what it was um, I, I oh another one of the games I remembered what it was Tetris Effect I sound so dumb but I saw this video I can't remember it was like a journalist uh, brought in one of the top players for Tetris on the NES and made him play Tetris Effect. And this is like I kind Wait, of is this a game that's out yet or is it It's like... not out. No, no. It was shown at E3. It's a VR Tetris game for PSVR. Oh, okay. But you can play it if you don't have PSVR. You can play it as a normal Tetris game. But what's very interesting about it, it's a rhythm game that is also a Tetris game. So the music okay. kind of progresses as you you know clear Tetraminos. Tetraminos are obviously the blocks in Tetris. And I feel like Tetris is like, a, it's a classic game, but I kind of got into it because of, uh, you know, Puyo Puyo Tetris. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, I've, I've, I've heard of that. I've wanted to play for a while, but Dude, like... I, I, got to, I got to review that game. It's fantastic on PS4, but I think it's a lot better on Switch. So um, I urge you guys, if you're a fan of Puyo Puyo, if you're a fan of Tetris, pick it up or on Or if Switch. you're in America, if you're a fan of Eggman's uh, mean, be mean Bean Machine... <laughs> Which is just Puyo Puyo. <laughs> um, but no, seriously, if you guys enjoy that, really, I think 
play Puyo Puyo Tetris. But um, so yeah, it's it's so interesting, and the fact that you can play it in um, in VR, I think, kind of got me even more so excited. Because watching the video of the guy playing in VR, and you're looking around, and you're seeing all these amazing visual effects timed in with that music, and the fact that you can clear in in Tetris, the the main point of the game is to clear blocks, right? And the fact that where does the name Tetris come from? It's, it's when you clear f when you clear four rows of blocks, it's called a Tetris. So you can get up to in this new game, you can clear more than four block uh, th four rows of blocks. So you can clear up to sixteen. So you can fill the whole row, I mean the whole gameplay area full of blocks and clear it if you're a really skilled player. So I think. It is it's a it's a challenge for Tetris players. I think it's it's very interesting that it's such a thing is in VR and such a thing exists a Tetris rhythm game with fantastic music. I think what got if a lot I remember of people, correctly, the game looks fantastic too. Oh, like man. the game looks absolutely amazing, and more so just the music. Just I I think if you look at the main music that they showed off in the trailer for the game for the gameplay trailer. Um, that song is is getting like millions of views on YouTube now, so it's like it's oh my god, it's ridiculous. It's it's just fantastic, and I think I might just even pick up PSVR just to get it. Like I know that really? sounds a bit weird, yeah. It's it's I, that says something because PSVR is so dead. It's it's more dead than I mean. The PSVR, I don't want to call right? it dead, but I, the price is just like it's high. It's high, but you can get them used quite cheap. I think. Or if the game comes out um, on a different, on PC for like a uh, Vive and uh, thing, I might just get you know gaming PC that can handle VR and then get it on PC. But from what I know, it's a it's a Sony exclusive. But yeah, th those are the games I'm excited for 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 this year so far. Yeah, I I, I really forgot about that. Like I've I remember you mentioning it to me, but like, I, I didn't know you were like this excited for it. I might have to no, go no. check like, it out. I'm, really, I'm super excited for it. Honestly, I've never been into um, Tetris, honestly. It's always been kind of a, a meme. I know that there's a serious community built around it, but I was just like, eh, not my type of thing, you know? I mean, I just like the idea of taking like classics and then turning them into these like remixed versions of their former selves. Like that's, that's one reason why I love uh, Pac-Man Championship Edition so much. You know what kind of got me into Tetris, Kevin, is Puyo Puyo Tetris because there was a story behind it. It was fun. It was quirky. The fact that you were playing two games in one, and there was also party games as well, like uh, playing Tetris with with more than one player. Like imagine playing Tetris with four people side by side on the Switch. It it gets intense. Like it really does, because you you just want to beat your your opponents. Like so I see. Maybe you want to give me the Switch version so we can play together. Maybe, maybe. I, you know, get I a think, switch, dude. I'm gonna get, get a switch, and then I'm gonna buy. When I get a switch, I'm gonna buy you guys all Puyo Puyo Tetris. That's a promise. I, I, I'd be down for that. Like, for <laughs> yeah. I mean, that, that's a new one for me. I'm still quite shocked, honestly, because people are like, you know, get switch for Breath of the Wild, get switch for Odyssey, or you know, get switch for Mario Kart, or yeah. yeah but then, Brawl. like, you kind of see Brawl, all the SSB, other like but, third party damn. games are coming out, and it's like. Wow, it's just ridiculous. Like a lot of my games are like the lot. Of, a lot of games I'm excited for are third party. Like they aren't even from Nintendo. Like they're just like. Which I think it's very interesting that Nintendo has hype for those those third party games, which has never been seen on a Nintendo console. I think recently, right? Because yeah, it was just mainly their their uh, their first party titles that were smashing. Yeah, that was the biggest problems with the Wii U. It just had like zero third-party support, and I feel like that like they're definitely pushing for that support with the Switch this time because like who could really turn down the idea of playing any kind of game at home and then taking it like on a plane or like in the car? Like it's it's just so it's just such a good system. But I mean, overall, guys, that was that was a pretty fucking hype discussion. Um. It's nice to see what you guys have been playing recently. It's nice to see Joe's heartfelt rant, <laughs> I would say, slash promotion of um, of World Ends With You. I'm pretty fucking hyped for that, right? You, you, um, uh, Kevin, just, if you don't buy it, I'm going to gift it to you for Christmas. 
I am not even kidding. Why, why would you say that? Why would you say, if you don't buy it, I'll gift you? Now I'm just going to fucking wait for Christmas, man. <laughs> no, I mean, like, you better buy it. If you don't, I'm going to, like, I'm going to make sure you play it at some point. That's basically what I'm saying. I fucking want to, because honestly, okay, for those of you who don't know, um, I guess uh, the world that ends with you, the equivalent for me, is, like, Zero Escape, right? And just seeing, seeing gameplay of the world that ends with you reminds me of just... The experience I had with Zero Escape, like the way that Joe talks about it, you know, it just opening his eyes and shit on what can be done with storytelling, it reminds me a lot of what I thought when I first played through Zero Escape. So I'm and how every timeline is canon. <laughs> yeah, how every ti timeline is canon, how everyone's dead but not dead. But <laughs> I guess that's kind of a spoiler. But <laughs> um, overall, it was a pretty fucking hype discussion. You know, I I think we should do more of these because. I know that a lot of you GOP listeners, right? We don't do enough of these. We don't do enough of these, right? A lot of you GOP listeners, you guys are veterans from the OG days of GALP when, uh, sorry, <clears throat> KG was on with Bish and etc. We had guests on talking. I remember Bish was talking to me about how, like, they were recording in, it was in a spa or something, wasn't it? No, it was um, Aaron Fitzgerald. Um, Aaron her, mom, was... her mom came from Canada because she's Canadian. And they were they were getting their nails done, and she was eating donuts as they were getting their nails done. So I was like, "Whoa!" And the mum made a guest appearance, and I think that's that is Erin's mum first time, and I think the only time she'll make an appearance on the podcast. So I feel blessed. Hashtag blessed. <laughs> that's so that that's wholesome as hell. I, I don't think many podcasts can say they got a voice actor's mum so on while having. You know, donuts. Donuts. At, uh, uh, no, no honestly, I think that's like the best way to record any kind of episode. None of our other achievement matters. It's just that's the crown. That's the crowning achievement. You know, ne let's, next time we record, uh, next time we record Galp, uh, we should just record it in like a bakery shop instead of just recording it at home. It's like, hey guys, like we're 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 at you live at uh at Carlos's bake shop. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa! Don't give a shout out to Carlos and his bake shop. All right, he didn't pay for the sponsorship. Okay, the food, the 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 sweets are amazing, but at the same time, I'm also biased because soft sweets are like my weakness. This is what we're trying to do. We're trying to bring back the good old days of Gail. I not to sound like an old grandpa like Bish, but. You know, if you guys like this episode, right, and you want to see more of it, let us know, right? Once again, you can contact us on Twitter at Get A Life Podcast. That's Bish's main Twitter page, but also the ones that Joe and I also browse from time to time. So if you want to hit us up, go on that Twitter. We also have our personal Twitters. Mine's at Tolray, at T-O-L-V-R-A-I-E. And Joe? Mine's at KiboGamer, spelled K-I-B-O-U-G-A-M-E-R. Other than that, there's also our website, for those of you who don't know, at www.getalifepodcast.com. Uh, www www and we also have a brand new Discord. So if you want to talk about the games that you're hyped for with us, right, and sh share your passion about gaming and anime, go check us out on Discord. The link is on the website. Once again, www.getalifepodcast.com. Other than that, guys, thank you so much for listening. This has been another episode of the Get A Life Podcast. And until next time, stay sexy. Well, you can't do that twice in an episode, man. That's cheating. Well, it is. It's, well, it's Joe. Joe doesn't have no rules. <laughs>